Why go outside and celebrate summer when you can stay inside, wear all black, and be hella salty? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a tag that I saw a bunch of my favorite channels doing, and I had to jump on the bandwagon because I can let out a little salt. I can be a little salty. This is the bad and the boring tag. This was originally created by Elisa Lobotomy, which that's a that's an awesome name. That is an incredible name. I just subscribed to her. She's got a really cute channel and she's almost at a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't seen her channel or heard of her, go check her out. I'll have her channel linked down below. And then the other two videos that I saw do this channel. The other two videos that I saw do this channel. Did I have a stroke? The other two channels that I also saw do this video that really made me want to do it were Teresa is dead and Smoky Glow. So I'll have both of their videos linked down below too because they had some really good answers. So this tag is 10 questions and it's all about bad and boring makeup. So let's, let's go. Let's go. Question number one is a foundation finish that you don't like. I'm not a huge, like I, okay. So I had to think about this for a bit because personally it depends on the time of year. If it is winter, I'm looking for like a nice glowy kind of dewy foundation. Whereas in the summer, I'm really looking for like a matte foundation. I want matte. I want it not flat, but I need it to be matte. So I think the only, I'm trying to think, the only foundation that I really don't like is if it's incredibly full coverage and incredibly matte. Because I think that is that doesn't work well with my skin. It tends to really age me and I have to use it sparingly or like mix it in with other foundations. A good example of this is like the Marc Jacobs Remarkable or like Dermacol. I can't use Dermacol by itself all over my face, but if I mix it into other things, it works for me. But a foundation finish by itself, if it's like ultimate full coverage and matte, like super matte, not really. But really, the other foundation finishes that work well for me it really depends on the time of year because my skin is heavily reliant on the seasons question number two is what is the worst mascara you've ever tried well so i personally really did not and still don't like the Too faced better than sex mascara i know everyone and their mother loves it but i tried it out and it just uh, it flaked on me. It almost ruined every single like look that I did with that mascara. I just couldn't. I tried the mini. I tried the full size. I tried another full size. I just, it didn't work for me. And I've never had a found, or not foundation, I've never had a mascara perform that badly on me. I have plenty of other mascara favorites. I actually did the whole video talking about my like top 10 mascaras, but that's the, that's the one that sticks out in my mind as like, oh, that was terrible. Question number three is, what is one thing you tried once and then threw away? Well, <laughs> well, really bad setting sprays for, for me fall into this category, especially there is this one from Hard Candy and it was like a dewy setting spray with uh, like crystals, like glow crystals or something, something in it like that. And I sprayed it and it was just liquid glitter, liquid glitter ruined my face. I had to walk into work with a face full of liquid glitter. An actual office. I used that once and immediately threw it in my fail pile, included it in my last favorites and fails video, and then that went away. <laughs> that immediately went away. You do me that dirty and you're gone. <laughs> Jesus. Question number four is, what is the most boring eyeshadow palette you own? So I actually went through my collection real quick and I pulled out two contenders here. The first one is from Maybelline and this is the City Mini in Matte About Town and it's just matte neutrals. I keep this around because I actually really like the formula of these City Mini palettes. I think they're a great option and they're pretty affordable depending on where you buy them. They can be anywhere from seven to ten dollars per palette. And I like keeping this around because it's a really good drugstore option and I really do like the fact that it's an all matte palette. For some reason you don't see, I know now we're seeing a little bit more, but for the longest time you really couldn't find many all matte palettes at the drugstore. So I think this was actually a really good idea to come out with, a really good option, but it's just your boring everyday kind of neutral palette. So it is it is pretty boring, but it's like a good staple to have. The next palette I have that kind of tied with the City Mini is from ColourPop and it's the All I See is Magic palette. And like when I first got this, I was kind of excited, but I rarely reach for it because whenever I look at it, like I kind of 
yawn. If I look deep in, if I look deep into the soul of this palette, if I look like deeply at this palette, I see some great shades in here. I see some great shimmers. I got a row of nice mattes in here. Oh, I did rearrange the palette. So if this doesn't look like your all I see is magic palette, that's why I have a thing for rearranging my colored pop palettes because these are so easy to depot and just move around. But I've got some good shades in here, like new, good workable shades. But it's boring. It's boring. It's kind of, it's boring. But I know it's a good formula. I know they're good shades, which is why it's lasted so long and through so many declutters in my collection. Question number five is, what is a makeup trend you think is boring and want to go away? <laughs> Thought about this for a bit. And honestly, I know like contouring has been like this big thing for so long. But I feel like I'm like, I like the way that it looks. But in my routine, I think there's a question later on about the most boring part of your routine. I think the contouring is kind of the most boring part or one of the most boring parts, if not the most boring part. And I kind of want to see us as a community move towards some different looks because I feel like the chiseled contoured look, while it is nice and I do like the way that it looks on me, I'm getting a bit bored of it. I kind of want to experiment with different shapes, with different colors, with different things, and I don't know. I'm definitely not going to go away from it anytime soon because I am panning a contour palette, which is a great time to have this thought, right? But I do think eventually it's going to phase out. Like the hard chiseled contour look I don't think is going to be in vogue for too much longer, maybe a couple more years. I would like to see more like blush heavy kind of looks. I would like to see more I don't know, dewy, kind of glowy, like not as harsh looks. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want it to be so sharp and harsh. I want it to be a little bit more soft. I say as I'm wearing like harsh contour and black lipstick and black everything, yeah. <laughs> Question number six is what is the worst lipstick you have tried? Or the worst liquid lipstick you have tried? <sighs> so I'm gonna have to go with a collab for this one. I mentioned this in a previous video, but Casey Holmes did a collab with Palladio and they came out with three liquid lipsticks, which I jumped on. I used to watch Casey Holmes all the time and she actually introduced me to some of my favorite lipsticks. So when I saw her come out with a collab, of lipsticks, I was like, I gotta jump on these. I gotta try them out. They were the most drying, uncomfortable, short wearing lipsticks I've ever tried. I wore one for a full day and I had to reapply it so many times and it felt like my lips were drying out the whole day. I just couldn't keep them. I ended up decluttering them in my last big declutter and ugh, I, I really wanted them to work. I really like I wanted them to work. I even tried wearing a gloss on top to see if that helped, but it would just take off the lipstick. So unfortunately those just were crap. Question number seven is what color do you think is the most boring one? I'm gonna say brown only because it's boring to me because I see it all the time. Not just like my room but my eyes are brown, my hair was brown before I dyed it a deeper black. I just, t to me, brown is kind of just like a staple, like it's always there. So I kind of consider it the most boring. So I, I try to stay away more like from brown eyeshadows and brown things. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I still use bronzer and contour, but like I think when it comes to like lipsticks or eyeshadows or things like that, I stay away from brown. Question number eight is, what brand do you think is coming out with the most boring things? <laughs> well, to me, this was a tie between Benefit and Smashbox. I have not been excited about anything from Smashbox other than their kind of like boring base products. Like they make good contour and highlight. They, they make good contour shades. I did try a highlight palette from them once and it, it didn't work the way that I wanted it to and I didn't like the way it blended out. But like bronzer, contour, and primers are decent. But like those are kind of like your staple boring aspects of your routine and I don't need to spend big buck money on those. I could get those from the drugstore, right? So everything else that Smashbox has come out with, their collabs, eyeshadow palettes, everything, I've not been tempted by. I thought they were just really boring and kind of the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So Smashbox needs to step it up and uh, kind of the same with Benefit. Benefit has been doing, I think they're changing a lot of things around. I've never once been excited for an eyeshadow palette. The only things I've actually really liked from Benefit have been like their under eye concealer color corrector and their blushes. I mean, they've got really cute packaging, but kind of, th that's kind of it. <laughs> 
So I would like to see a lot more from Benefit as well. And here's the next question. So question number nine is what step in your makeup routine is the most boring? I think right now it is kind of bronzer and contour. I'm all like on autopilot when I do those. Whereas the rest of my routine when it comes to foundation, concealer, I'm kind of really paying attention and doing all of that even with blush and stuff. But when it comes to bronzer and contour, I've been panning a contour palette. So I kind of have it down. I know exactly how much I have to get. So I kind of like I'm on autopilot watching a YouTube video or something and just throwing it on. So for right now, that's the most boring part for me. Last but not least, question number 10 is, if you had to choose between a good base and a bad eye look, or a bad base and a good eye look, which one would you choose? Man, I, you gotta go for the base. You need to have a good base. If you don't have a good base, it doesn't matter what else you have on. <laughs> I can deal with bad eye looks. I've given myself bad eye looks. But as long as I have a good, solid foundation base, you're fine. Especially if you're going out, especially if I'm going to work or anything, I need to make sure that at least I have a good base, solid base down. Otherwise, I'm going to look like Boo Boo the Fool. We don't need that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun being a bit salty in this video. And I don't know, I saw everyone else doing this video and I thought it was such a great tag. So make sure you check out Lisa Lobotomy's channel. Make sure you check out Teresa is Dead and Smoky Glow's videos as well. And if you've also done this tag, let me know down below. And if you haven't, I'm tagging you. I wanna see you guys do this tag too. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.